So friends, to, tonight or this late afternoon, um, it's always difficult for us, like five o'clock, it's not late yet that it's super dark outside as you can see and it's not morning anymore. So in this late afternoon, um, I want to share a word with us today that I trust God will work in us. So it's not something that you hear and like, okay, cool, that's great, we're going on, going on with our lives. Um, I do believe that the, the Word of God needs to permeate into our hearts. That's why um, next week we're starting with our Abide series. I'll share a bit more on that later. But the Word of God, we need to read it, we need to feed on it, we need to drink it in, but it needs to permeate, um, marinate into our souls. It needs to take form inside of us. It needs to become alive inside of us. And yeah, so I pray that the Word tonight will do something along those lines for you throughout this year. Now, um, when we think about 2022, just say that quickly, 2022. Okay, by this time we were supposed to have hoverboards and all of the cars would be flying if we think back to the future. Um, right, some of you watched all of those movies? All right. So, but when you think about 2022, what comes to mind for you? When you think about your, um, your work, your studies, your relationships, what comes to mind? Um, what emotions are happening inside of you? Okay? Think about 2022. Think about your work. <laughs> Think about starting work tomorrow, Dirki. What's happening inside of your soul? Children are coming back on Wednesday. <laughs> Think about those of you who are studying. Um, think about your studies lying ahead of you. Your relationships, um, either with the people you're engaged to. Hopefully there's butterflies and stuff um, inside of you. Um, maybe you've got family relationships that's not so great, and you've got to see some of them again soon. What emotions are stirring in your heart? Is it things of joy and peace and excitement and anticipation? Or are you maybe even confronted with thoughts of fear, anxiety, um, depression, when you think about this year? Um, now, I said to um, Bianca earlier, like we always say like this time of the year, are you ready for the new year? The new year doesn't care whether you're ready or not. It's year. <laughs> All right, whether you're ready to start work again tomorrow, uh, <laughs> you're going to pitch anyway. Um, and, and I think there's so much when we think about this new year that there's stuff, obviously, that we're excited about, but there should also be stuff that might concern you, um, that you have not figured out yet. Um, if you have already figured out all the detail of 2022, um, come and chat to us afterwards. We'd love to hear your prophetic insights into what's going to happen. Um, but whom of you have some New Year's resolutions? Okay, you've got some things that you want to do differently. Um, who of you know why New Year's resolutions often don't work? <laughs> like, you'll start strong, like, I'm going to go to the gym. It's like that, that popular meme, like um, December 20, oh, probably December 2021, the gyms was full because people were going for their summer body. But let's say mid midweek, July, when it's the coldest, the gyms are empty. Um, but now January, all the New Year's re resolutions, the gyms are full. And then two, three, four weeks later, like, Mm, yeah, I don't feel like waking up early anymore. Um, and the thing is that 2021 transitioned into 2022, but 2021 didn't stay in 2021. Like all the stuff that you, has been happening in your life last year didn't just magically stop when the clock struck 12.01 um, and the new year started and all of your past fears and failures and disappointments and stuff didn't just magically go away. Like, I think at the end of um, 2020, we were all like hoping, okay, after 2020, COVID is over. First of January, poof, <laughs> and life will just go on and we can go on as normal. But that didn't happen. Um, the job you were so thankful to take a break from in December is still there in January. The people that you were so grateful to take a break from in December are still there in January. None of my staff nod their heads. Okay. okay. All right. But um, the financial problems you had end of last year, lo and behold, <laughs> hopefully they're not worse. Hopefully you didn't um, do stupid things over December. Um, and the, the bad habits you formed in 2021 are still going to be here in 2022. So New Year's resolutions don't necessarily change all of that because things don't just magically change. Life is something we work at, we learn from, we develop from, we grow from, and then we apply things differently 
so that our futures can look different. Um, often you hear that thing where people say, if I knew, um, I can't remember when it was, I think it was 2004, 2005, I got an email on my Hotmail account. Who of you had Hotmail accounts? Okay. <laughs> Uh, give away your age. If you had an Hotmail account, you're over 30. <laughs> so on my Hotmail account, and someone um, posted and said, don't you want to buy Bitcoin for a dollar? I said, oh, please, don't bother me with this nonsense. <laughs> if we could rewind time, we would buy Bitcoin for a dollar. Um, but so when we, if we look back, and it's like, yeah, there's stuff that I would do differently to affect my today. But the reality is there are things you can do differently now that will affect your tomorrow. Um, so when we go into this new year, there are things that we should approach differently. But I want to speak about a theme of hope. Um, and I don't know where hope is currently, your hope um, barometer or your hope tank. I don't know how full your hope tank is as you think about this year. But there's ample reason for hope. And hope is one of the most powerful forces. They can't necessarily always explain it because it's not something you can physically touch but it's one of the most powerful forces at play in the world today. So the absence of hope leaves a person with very little mo motivation for today or tomorrow. You have no desire to get out of bed. You've got no desire to do anything. You've got no desire to approach anything or to tackle any challenge. There's just no motivation. Very little drive and enthusiasm about life and even relationships. And it can take you into a deep, dark hole of hopelessness, meaninglessness, and depression. The absence of hope. The presence of hope can literally save your life. It can literally save your life. It can cause you to endure and keep going in the most difficult of times. Hope can influence your mind and alter your state of well-being that it affects even your physical health. Hope, something that you can't physically touch. Having hope can alter your mind and your physical well-being can be changed because you have hope. Um, I want to read an excerpt from... Um, something that someone wrote. It says, A Holocaust survivor, Eli Wiesel, said, Just as a man cannot live without dreams, he cannot live without hope. Hope is what has sustained the Jewish people through their long and bitter exile. Hope leaves room for God and His providence. Hope lets us believe that no matter how dark the world seems today, there can be a better tomorrow. I don't know if you, um, if you have ever visited any of the the Holocaust uh, museums either in um, Europe or in, in Israel. But so many of the stories of the Holocaust survivors speak about the presence of hope and how the presence of hope enabled them to endure through extremely difficult times when everyone you know maybe has already been killed and you have to, you have to endure, you have to not give in, not give up. A lot of people didn't necessarily die because of a gas chamber, but they died because of, there was no hope. So the presence of hope can literally save your life. So where do you and I get this type of hope? Now, we have this um, small discipleship booklet called a, a two one one two, <laughs> a one two one. all right? Um, and in chapter 3, there's the Lordship chapter, and there's a scripture in chapter 3 that says, not that, it says this. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 says, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Okay, so we're going to read it all together. Are you ready? One, two, three. But in your hearts. Gentleness and respect. <laughs> All right, well done. Good team effort. Now, I love certain parts of the scripture. Um, the scripture is often used when we speak about evangelism and apologetics, the word reason, apologia, give a reason for the hope that you have, to be able to give a defense for why you believe what you believe. And all of us have an apologia, a reason for what you believe, even if you believe the wrong thing. There's a reason why you believe what you believe. But there's a connection I want us to see tonight. Um, Peter writes and he says, In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. 
So people will ask you for a reason because they see what in your life? It's in bold. Hope. All right? So it's not so much you going about and saying, hey, have you heard about Jesus? Can I tell you about Jesus? There will be something on your life that will draw people in and they'll say, tell me why your life is different. Tell me why something on you is different. You and I work in the same company, but you don't um, deal with the circumstances the same way I do. Why? You and I are going through the same financial challenges in society today. Why is your life different? There's a reason to the hope that you have. Now, what produces this kind of hope that is attractive? If you go to the next, there we go. See, Sean, you're so on it. Prophetic. Set apart Christ as Lord produces hope. Friends, when you and I set apart Jesus as Lord, there will be a hope on your life that cannot be influenced by circumstances, and it will be attractive. People will be drawn to the hope that you carry because you've set apart Christ as Lord in your heart. Now, the heart doesn't necessarily speak of your physical beating to do heart. It's the innermost part of your being. And in your innermost part, set apart Christ as Lord. Make a decision to sanctify the Lord as holy. To say, He is the sovereign creator of the universe. He is the God of everything. He is the God of my life. He is the master, the owner, the ruler, the one who has ultimate authority, the one who has complete control of my life. I've surrendered every part of my being to Him. He is my Lord. Now that is a tough topic, and it will probably be the topic that you and I need to endure with for the rest of our lives until we see Jesus face to face, because we so quickly want to be Lord over our own lives. If I ask you to spread all of your most treasured possessions, including your relationships, your marriages, your um, fiancés, onto a platform and say, okay, now are you willing to let go of all of that in order to follow Christ? All of us will, be, will struggle because there are some things that we desperately want to hold on to. And some of those things are not necessarily bad things. My wife is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. But am I willing to let go of everything so that I can hold on to Christ? That's a call, tall order. And we're challenged with this concept of lordship because it means that you have given away the ability or the right to d- dictate your own life to make your own decisions. There's a portion in the one-to-one that says, um, Lord means master, owner, the one who makes the decisions. How many of you struggle with that? How many of you have control issues? (laughs) How many of you have a spreadsheet to uh, manage your control issues? (laughs) Friends, we all struggle with this. And, and it's a normal part of our tension. Some people more than others, yes, there are some certain personality traits that goes into it, which is not necessarily bad in itself. But we all struggle to let go completely, to hold on completely to Christ. Um, but this is the call of God, that, we'll, that we're willing to lay aside everything, say, Jesus, I want to declare you as Lord over my life. Now, as you sit here tonight, as I'm standing here tonight, There are definitely things in my life that I'm not even aware of that God will cause me to let go of. That's okay. God deals today with today. Tomorrow, He deals with tomorrow. Tomorrow cares for itself. Do not worry yourself about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own problems. (laughs) God will deal with today what is necessary for today. But it's a space where I make a declaration or a decision in my heart to say, Jesus, You are my Lord. And I give you the authority over every area of my life. You have the right to dictate my decision making. You have the right to dictate what you want me to do this year, what you want me to spend my time on, my finances on, my energy on. You are Lord. Now, the the tricky part of this is, um, and in that chapter in the one-to-one, it also says that know this, that this Jesus whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Savior meaning that there is no Christianity apart from lordship. You cannot hold on to the forgiveness of Christ apart from making Him the Lord over your life. In His lordship lies His forgiveness. In His lordship lies His um, sanctification of your life. In His lordship lies His provision. In His lordship lies His provision over your life, um, His blessing over your life, His abundance over your life, His um, pleasement, pleasingness over your life lies in His lordship. Lordship is the avenue to access the fullness of who Jesus is. 
And then Peter says, when you make Christ Lord, it will produce a hope in your life that cannot be influenced by external circumstances. We sang that song about um, raised above the oceans. What does it say, Kylan, that words? Yeah, we'll rise above something. So that scripture that, that Kylan quoted in Mark 4, 35 on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. So Jesus makes his intentions known to his disciples. He says, we're on this boat and we will go to the other side. During the storm, where was Jesus? Sleeping. He was at peace. Then later when he rebukes the storm and he says, wind, the wind, um, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? The hope that Jesus produces is not dependent on the storms being calmed around you. There's a space where God lifts us up and we can carry a hope, friends, that is able to cause us to endure, to persevere, to keep going, to keep fighting the good fight. But it'll be attractive. And there's something that will be placed upon your life that will cause people to come to you and to say, there is something different about your life. If no one has come to you and said there's something different about your life, maybe you need to go and make on this text. Maybe you need to go and meditate on being, um, making Jesus Lord over every area of your life because there needs to be something on your life that's different, that causes people to say, what is it? What is it? And then we do get to share the incredible story of Christ. I want to read another quote by Henry Nowen. I don't know if that, how, that's how you pronounce his surname. Hope is not dependent on peace in the land, justice in the world, and success in business. Hope is willing to leave unanswered questions unanswered and unknown futures unknown. Hope makes you see God's guiding hand not only in the gentle and pleasing moments, but also in the shadows of disappointment and darkness. I'll read it again. Hope is not dependent on peace in the land, justice in the world, and success in business. Hope is willing to leave unanswered questions unanswered and unknown futures unknown. Hope makes you see God's guiding hand not only in the gentle and pleasing moments or pleasant moments, but also in the shadows of disappointment and darkness. Hope rises above. Hope is able to carry you beyond. Lamentations 3 verse 21 to 23, the preacher says, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Reflecting on the character of God, reflecting on the goodness of God, reflecting on the promises of God, those are the things that give us hope. Not your bank balance, not the circumstances around you that change or do not change, but something beyond that gives us a stability of hope. D.R. Denton said, Hope does not spring from a person's mind. It is not snatched out of midair. It results from the promises of God. Friends, where do you and I get the promises of God? From His Word. From His Word. And we get to build our lives on His Word. We get to build our lives on His character. We get to build our lives on His promises that will not fail. He gives us a hope that cannot be shaken. He gives us a hope that cannot disappoint. There's a difference between hope and hopeful. Some of you are hopeful that you'll get an increase in your salary. Some of you are hopeful that you'll um, pass your um, studies this year. Some of you are hopeful that we'll be able to go on missions again. Yes. Amen, everyone? All right, good. But there's a difference between being hopeful for something and having hope. Hope is independent of your circumstances. Hope can be independent of your emotions, but it will influence your emotions. I hope that makes sense. You can go through the darkest turmoil in your life and still have hope. Psalm 130 verse 4 to 7 says, But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in His word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with Him is full redemption. 
Church, put your hope in the Lord, for with Him, and for the, with the Lord is unfailing love, and with Him is full redemption. The things that our souls crave is found in God. The things that our hearts desire after are found in God. The things that you think will satisfy you the most are found in God. Church, put your hope in the Lord. I'm going to ask the band to come up so long. And what is the greatest thing that you can give yourself to this year? What is the greatest thing that you can give yourself to? Hopefully, many of you have already spent some time meditating about this year, thinking, okay, God, how can I spend my life this year? What are things that I want to maybe do more of? Um, this year, I want to pray more. I want to read my Bible more. Or I want to be a better neighbor to my neighbors. Um, I want to devote myself to my studies. Hopefully this is a question that you have been thinking about a little. But what is the greatest thing that you can give yourself to this year? More than anything else, more than a new business idea that might rake in millions and solve world hunger. More than completing your studies with a good success. More than your own personal growth and development. And more than any social justice pursuit the greatest thing you can give yourself to this year is to know the Lord your God. The greatest thing you can give yourself to, devote yourself to, pour yourself out for, is to know the Lord your God, to obey His voice, and to live a life that is well-pleasing to Him. When your hope comes from a place of lordship, it's not influenced by anything external, and it's not measured against anything external. It's not influenced by anything external, but it's also not measured against anything external. So during this year and at the end of 2022, you are not competing or comparing against anything or anyone. Sometimes as Christians, we can fall into a performance trap um, where, let's say, Kylan and Sinead, are preparing to go to Kyrgyzstan to be missionaries in a very difficult nation. What are you doing with your year? <laughs> I'm sarcastic in the sense that that's not what we're meant to do. The call of the Christian is not to measure yourself against anyone else's call. Um, I love this theme in the books of Narnia. Um, where when Aslan speaks to someone, he says, I'm telling you your story, not telling you their story. Um, and that's, I love that theme. And Jesus echoes, echoes this in the book of John as well, where he says to, to, to John, what, what my plans are for that person has nothing to do with you. You follow me. When your hope is anchored in lordship, you're not competing against anyone else. You're not competing or comparing against anyone else. You obey the voice of Jesus. And at the end of this year, when you've done that, when you've sought the Lord your God with your whole heart and you've sought out His voice and obeyed Him promptly, your life will be well-pleasing to Him. It's not something that you have to chase. It's not something that you have to measure against anyone else because your hope is not anchored in anything or anyone else. It's anchored in Christ alone. Your hope is secure, your heart is at peace, and you are liberated and you can fully and freely live. You see, friends, when, when we're always competing and comparing, we'll always make decisions that's good in the eyes of man. But when your hope is secure, your joy will be full, your peace will be full, and you will be freed, liberated, set free, so that you can fully live the plans and the purposes God has called you for. Not only do you and I to have hope, which is good. Remember the absence of hope. So not only do you and I get to have an eternal and secure hope, but we get to be carriers of hope. I spoke to someone just before church while during prayer um, who had a friend commit suicide over the holiday and one friend attempt to commit suicide. Um, I know of two other people who committed suicide over December, January. And there's a lot of hopelessness in the world. And, and you and I need to understand that God calls us as His church to be a city on the hill. 
not just to be receivers of the hope that He's generally bestowed upon us, the grace of God that is a gift freely given. Not only has He given it us, to us for our benefit, but we are carriers of hope. And I pray that as a church, the testimony over our lives will be that we will not be so consumed with our own lives that we do not see the needs around us. That we will not be so focused on what we want that we don't see that people are suffering around us. That our hearts and our homes will not be so closed down for our own safety and protection, but that we will make ourselves vulnerable so that others can experience hope. You see, the Bible doesn't call you as the Christian to walk like this, to go through the world with these eye patches and like, no, everything is good. And then we, we, we um, made that declaration earlier. God is good all the time, all the time God is good. Yes, God is always good, but life is not always good. Things in life that happen are not always good. And, and God doesn't call us as His church to live with these eye patches. He, live, he calls us to have an open view of what's really happening in the world. But then He calls us to be carriers of hope because we have an eternal hope that is residing inside of us. So the church in 2022, and this is my invitation and, and call to every single one of us. Be the church with us. Jesus calls us into this life-changing journey called discipleship. I want to call you to open yourself up to be discipled if you're not already. And would you avail yourself, make yourself available to Jesus to say, God, I'm willing to disciple others. All of us are the products of someone investing time um, into our lives and laying foundations into our lives. Serve with us. Um, serve with us. Avail yourself in giving of your time and your talents to serve with us. The beauty of the church is found in the collective. As we collectively give of ourselves, the body takes shape. As we collectively come together, the body has um, color, if I can call it like that. And collectively, as the church, we get to experience more of Christ. And then pray. <laughs> Whom of you have some things about this year that you're uncertain of? Okay? Maybe you have this year figured out, but there's areas of your life that you're uncertain of. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we can't always figure out in our own strength, and we shouldn't. Um, and the plans of man will not always bear fruit. Um, everything we dream of will not always come into fruition the way we think it should. But the one thing you and I as Christians can do and are called by God to do that will bear fruit is to pray. And I want to call you as the church, the body of Christ of whom Jesus is the head. Let's pray. Pray in your personal capacity. Pray corporately with us. Um, if you go to Highfield online forward slash pray, you'll see that there's different prayer slots, um, Wednesday mornings that's happening online and Friday mornings for the men. Um, I know that um, Andre's got a plan to open up a Thursday evening prayer room that'll be running. Um, and then Sundays before the service from four o'clock, we pray. But friends, if, if, if we can give ourselves to prayer, we will avail much for the kingdom of God. There's one thing that we can do and should do, and that's to pray. I want you to just take a moment and reflect for yourself, and, and we're going to pray together as a church. And I know, like I said um, previously, this can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable, but it's okay. Um, like Christianity isn't supposed to always be comfortable. But we're going to pray together for one another. And I want you to think about hope in your own heart. Are there maybe things that is causing you to not have hope in this moment? What are things that are causing you to be fearful and anxious about this year? And how can you practically invite God into that area of your life? And then secondly, the scripture said that Lordship produces a hope that is attractive. That there will be something on our lives that causes people to be drawn in and to ask us for a reason of, for the hope that we have. I want us to pray for one another that that hope will mark our lives. That there will be a lordship rooted in our hearts that causes hope to be this witness to the world. What are things that is causing you to not have hope? And then let's pray that our hope 
will be an attraction, a light to those who need it most. So I want you to form groups of two to three, not more than three, preferably, um, so that we can spend like a time and praying for each other. Um, but I want us just to focus on those two things. And maybe, maybe you don't have anything that you can think about now that's causing you not to have hope. That's okay. You don't have to think about something. You don't have to think out something. Um, but I want us just to engage with those two thoughts. What's causing you to not have hope? And then let's pray that we will be a church that has hope because of Jesus being the ruler of our hearts. Okay, so let's form small groups and pray. So Psalm 100, uh, Lamentations 3 says, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Father, I want to pray and declare that over us as your church, Lord, as your people that your faithfulness and your steadfast love endures forever. Um, you never change. Your mercies are new every morning. And we thank you, Lord, that because of who you are, we can have hope. We can have a hope, Lord, that rises above. We can have a hope that is steadfast, have a hope that endures, have a hope that causes us, Lord, to move forward in the fullness of your plans over our lives. And to have a hope, Lord, that draws people in. And as a church, Lord, we want to ask, would you open our hearts and our eyes, Lord, to be aware of the things around us where you're calling us to spread hope. Give us names, Lord. Give us people that you're calling us to reach out to and to pray for. Um, yeah, Lord, we, we want to declare that our lives belong to you. You are Lord. You are God. There is none like you. There is no one higher than you. There is no one to whom you give an account but yourself, Lord. And we just declare that over our lives. You are Lord. And we ask that you will fill, form your will in us. That your desires will take shape in our hearts. That your will will be done in us and through us. Because you are Lord. There is nothing and no one that compares to you. Amen. Amen. We're going to um, end with a, one final song. So you can stand up so long. But then I want to um, give us just a quick intro for next week. So uh, we, next week we're starting with a six-week series uh, globally, the, the Abide series. So we'll be preaching through the book of John, the Gospel of John. And John 15 verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <laughs> Those of you who've been joining our Wednesday morning prayers will know the scripture and this chapter. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now the atheist will say, I can brush my teeth without God. It's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying that your life will account to no eternal significance apart from Him. There's nothing that you can do of eternal value apart from Him. So during this series, we're going to be speaking about what it means to abide in Christ and specifically looking at the beauty and the power of God's Word. And in John 15, we see four promises that when we abide, we will bear much fruit. Our prayers will be answered. Our lives will glorify God and our joy will be full. Does that sound exciting? All right, who of you would like your prayers to be answered? Answered prayers are better than non-answered prayers. Okay, just FYI. Who of you would like to bear much fruit? Good fruit, not bad fruit. All right, who of you would like your life to glorify God? And who of you would like to have joy? Who of you have a little bit of joy left in you tonight? No one. Okay, great. Donovan there at the back. Who of you have a little bit of joy still left in you now? Come on. All right. 